if you've spent any time in the Gundam fandom, you're without a doubt familiar with the meme that painting anything red and putting a horn on it makes it three times faster. But this got me to wonder, what are the actual fastest mobile suits in Gundam? And unlike uh, some of my other list videos, I didn't just rely on the official specs. Because especially when it comes to speed, just looking at the maximum acceleration doesn't always tell the full story. Otherwise, I'd have to start off this video with the gun tank as one of the fastest mobile suits of the whole one year war. But you know who is without a doubt the fastest? Bai. When it comes to buying things from Japanese websites like Mercari, Rocketen and Yahoo Auctions, where you can often find awesome Gundam related items at great prices, including Premium Bandai, but they only ship to Japan. And this is where Buy steps in to help you with getting those great deals. You can either browse those websites through the Buy website or the websites themselves and then paste the URL on Buy. Then you simply click the Buy Now button or the Place Bid button and Buy does the rest. Then once their products arrive at their warehouse, they'll keep the items for free for up to 30 days so you can easily combine the shipping of multiple items. And to easily find what you're looking for, here's a Kakarot Pro tip. Use the Japanese writing of the mobile suit or character you're looking for, which in 99.99% .99 of cases will be listed on their Gundam Wiki article. And when it comes to auctions, this is another one of Bai's big selling points. Their bidding system is instant and you also only have to pay once you win. So there's no need to upfront any money for an expensive auction when you're not even sure you're going to win the damn thing. And talking about money, by signing up through the link down below, you'll get 2000 yen off of your first purchase on Buy. So good luck hunting those deals and now let's have a look at our first fastest mobile suit. And what better way to start off than with the meme itself, Char's custom Zaku 2 commander type. And while the three times faster joke doesn't completely hold water, it's not entirely wrong either. The commander type Zaku can most simply be summed up as a highly tuned F-type, with a more powerful reactor and unlocked limiters, therefore allowing ace pilots to push this Zaku to the limit. As a result, it's often depicted as having a different backpack and sometimes even with extra thrusters on the legs, theoretically even further increasing its performance over that of the standard F-type. And in the case of Shar, he would also develop a special stepping technique that boosted his Zaku off of debris and ships that he downed, creating the illusion that it was going three times the speed of a regular Zaku. While in reality, the output of the S-Type was roughly 30% higher than that of the F-Type. But of course, given the customized nature of the S-Type, this varied from unit to unit. Another advantage of Char's technique was that jumping off of debris also saved his thrusters, and therefore his fuel. Something that was very important because the S-Types' fuel tanks were still the same as the less fuel-hungry F-Types. And then many years later, this machine would be reincarnated in the form of the Sin Nanju. A machine that was first developed by Anaheim for the Federation, but then stolen and tuned up by Neo Zeon. But back to the One Year War, where there was another machine that was notorious for its speed. And I'm not talking about the Zaku 2 high mobility type. The Zuda. The machine that managed to make an incredible first impression running circles around the competing Zaku 1. But then the truth reared its ugly head. This speed came at an enormous sacrifice. Neither the machine nor the engine could withstand the enormous thrust that the engineers wanted to put into it, and this resulted in an unstable machine that was like a meteor in more ways than one. Not even the supposedly fixed version that used the upgraded engine used by the Rigdom was spared this fate. <gasps> And if you want to find out how it was eventually fixed, 
you can check out my development history on the Zida. And talking about the DOM, of all the units I could find, this chonker of a mobile suit was by far the fastest on land, at least of the ones that actually had a land speed listed. With a maximum speed of a blazing 381 kilometers an hour or 237 miles per hour, this thing could easily outrun a Formula One car and any mobile suit that it encountered. And combined with heavy weaponry, the Dom and its many descendants would prove to be lethal foes for years to come. But despite the Dom being a very fast mobile suit, it wasn't yet fast to the point where it would physically harm its pilot. Unless the pilot ran into something, of course. Enter the Gundam Mark V, a machine that was originally developed by the Titans as a refined version of the Psycho Gundam and would later serve as a prototype for the famous Dobin Wolf. And this machine truly exemplified what the latter half of the Grips War and the following first Neo Zeon War were all about. Mobile suits that were armed to the teeth and heavily armored, yet, thanks to their incredible thrusters, still managed to pull off surprising speeds and agility. Despite its bulk, the maneuverability and speed of the Gundam Mark V were so powerful that it could literally knock its pilot's teeth out. This machine was definitely not for the faint of heart or those without dental. And things get even worse with the Unicorn Gundam, a unit whose G-forces killed its test pilot during the first test flight that we officially know about. When Unicorn is in Unicorn mode, its performance limiters are active, keeping the machine within the limits of what a normal pilot can handle. However, once the unit transforms into Destroy mode, the limiters are off and the unit can accelerate to up to 20 Gs, putting enormous strain on the pilot. And to fight against this, the pilot must wear a special suit that has a drug administration system to keep the blood flowing under these high G situations. And this got especially crazy with one of the Unicorn's sister units, the Phoenix. The machine somehow managed to accelerate to near light speed levels. And if you're wondering what that does to a pilot, there wasn't one at least not in the traditional sense. And the Unicorn Gundam isn't the only machine whose speed is famous for killing its pilots. Arguably the most legendary of them all is the Tall Geese, piloted by the Lightning Count himself, Zex Marquis. Officially, the Tall Geese has an acceleration of up to 15 Gs, but looking at the effect it has on the pilot, I think it's safe to say that they can produce a lot more. It was first tested out by veteran Oz pilot Otto. And despite being physically capable, this monstrous mobile suit really did a number on him and would later on even kill him. Zex then would initially fare a little better with his first run also landing him in the hospital. Fortunately for Zex though, he would be able to master it and the only other casualty on the inside of the Tall Geese would be his mask. However, even though the Tall Geese is often thought of as one of the fastest machines from Gundam Wing, there's one unit that's even faster. And the answer might surprise you. The Death Scythe Hell. Now, it does make sense that a stealth machine would be paired with incredible speed to make sure that it can make a quick getaway after it stealthily, or less stealthily, destroyed its targets. But nothing about the Dead Scythe Hell and its single main thruster really screams speed. So why is the Dead Scythe Hell the fastest machine of Wing and how do we know it? Well, included in the old 1144 scale manuals are the power levels of several stats of the mobile suits and the speed stat of the Tall Geese is level 150, whereas the Dead Scythe Hell is 170. And if you're now wondering, what about the Wing Zero? Well, that one is level 160. God of Death? More like God of Speed. And now it's time for a completely different unit, the Stargazer Gundam. 
rather than using overwhelming acceleration to reach incredible speeds during combat, the Stargazer Gundam instead uses a voiture lumiere system to slowly but surely build up speed for deep space exploration. The system catches the energy of solar winds, which it then converts into thrust for near endless acceleration. And alternatively, the unit can also be powered by a beam from a DSSD satellite. DSSD being the organization that developed the Stargazer. Or how about not requiring any acceleration at all? Like the Turn A or the Quanta. Two machines that have the ability to teleport. The Quanta actually did it in the series, and the Turn A is supposed to be able to do this when at full power. Now, you might say that teleportation doesn't count as going fast, but practically speaking, teleportation is just a really, really fast way to go from point A to point B. But in Gundam 00, we also find some more conventional speed boys with what I think is one of the fastest machines around that doesn't kill its pilot, the Gundam Harut, the upgraded version of the Arios, which itself was an upgraded version of the Kyrios with a higher focus on speed and mobility. And despite being less aerodynamic than its predecessors, the Harut is able to achieve higher speeds thanks to the raw power of its thrusters, something that gets even more enhanced by strapping two GN boosters to the legs. And as if that wasn't enough already, it of course also still had the Trans Am system. A system that can triple a Gundam's performance, including their speed, but only for a limited amount of time. And finally, we started with the Universal Century, and we're ending with the Universal Century. Reaching Mach 2 might not be a crazy achievement for fighter jets anymore, but they had to make compromises to enable these supersonic speeds. So a mobile suit being able to achieve this speed within the atmosphere is a pretty damn impressive feat. And thanks to its Minovsky flight system combined with the beam barrier system, the Xi Gundam was able to do this just by entering its flight form that was hardly any different from its normal form. The Minovsky flight system really was a crazy system and would see its culmination in the Minovsky drive system used by the Victory 2 Gundam, a unit that is often cited as one of the fastest Gundams ever. And with an official max acceleration of 20 Gs, it's not hard to see why. And our last machine then is a unit that was literally designed to set a speed record and was even named after it, the F-99 Record Breaker. And the big technological breakthrough for this machine was the miniaturization of the Minovsky drive system. A system that up to this point had only been possible in battleship sized units. And thanks to this, the record breaker far surpassed contemporary mobile suits in both speed and agility, and it was even said that it was possible for the machine to travel from Jupiter to Earth in 150 hours. Unfortunately, this could never be tested out due to reasons. And another unfortunate thing was that the unit was deemed as being too good by Sinri's upper echelons. Something that isn't all too surprising when you take into account that this machine was to be submitted to the Federation. And we all know that for the Federation, price to performance is king. And those were the fastest mobile suits that I could find in Gundam. If I missed some, let me know down below, and also let me know what your favorite speedy boy is, whether it was on this list or not. A big thanks to Bai for sponsoring this video. As always, another big thanks to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next time.